honored, guys, that we are together. And I hope that uh, our vision of the future after a couple of glasses of wine didn't change dramatically. Yes? <laughs> okay, so please take a seat. I would suggest that like we did in uh, Shanghai, all the speakers who will be speaking, I will ask to stand up and speak direct to the audience. So just very shortly, I told you that uh, today at 3 a.m. I had this dream about coming back to the history, yes, to our roots. And I would like to ask you guys, you are coming from very important companies, from different also value chain, uh, from different continents. And I think it's important when we picture something, we know what is the goal. And when we know what is the goal, we have 50% of success. So I would like to ask you guys to make the picture of the world 4-0 and how do you see you personally, but also your companies will contribute to the transition of our today's world in the world 4.0. So, father of the renewable energies, Hans Josef Fell. I have a vision, but I must begin with some news. US President Trump announced to leave Paris Protocol. I had a Twitter. This is a great damage for US economy because he will not follow the world with zero emission technology what we have see here in the room. This is a new business. And when a US president will close it down, will shrink it, he will find only a shrinking US economy. But the world, by the whole, will come more together to eagleize President Trump's anti-climate protection policy. And the rest of the world will increase in zero emission technologies. And therefore, Trump will have no chance. We will overcome in the world because the world has no other chance when it will over life. The first 400% renewables is a necessity. Necessity means when we want to stop the war over oil, the climate warming, the air pollution, we must come to a zero emission world, and this means 100% renewable energy world. That's the necessity. The second is how to come to it. When I look here to the hall, all people, I see so many CEOs who work on it. Today already, Renewables, wind and solar is the cheapest option in the world with energy. Why will the humankind be crazy to invest into expensive fossil and nuclear energy when we have cheap renewable energies? Therefore, the benefit with cheap renewable energies will follow 200% renewables. And so, I see we are able to do it and it will follow up. We have nations, not USA, not Germany, but Costa Rica, Uruguay, Chile, Sweden, Denmark. We have 50 nations already who made the decision in their national strategy to come within some decades to 100% renewables. And in the next years, we will see more and more nations. There is no chance to stop this process. And therefore, 100% renewables will come. Okay, thank you so much. So thank you so much, Hans uh, Josef, for these words. And uh, you know, 
In the past, people trusted Hans and his vision became true. I believe that once again, the vision will become true. Now I would like to ask Michael. So Michael, as I said before, in my opinion, is one of the leaders of the future because even he's German. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, uh, he's very me. flexible. He's always very flexible. He's open to a lot of new ideas. And uh, I think that he's ready for the change and ready for the disruption. How do you imagine the future? Already you try to orchestrate business of your company and also of your business partners. How do you imagine the future and what will be the role of your company? I think uh, what we are seeing and uh, I mean InterSolar 2017 is very clear about it. It's not just having some solar modules and get this energy somehow into the grid. It's much more the orchestration of different energies which are there. We have, um, I think, not only a price decrease in solar, but much more in batteries during the last uh, 18 months. And I'm always saying this is directly related to dieselgate happening. Without uh, having this issue of Volkswagen a couple of months back, I think we wouldn't have reached uh, the price level what we are seeing today. And it's great. I mean, uh, we are talking to many people of, and many of you are in the room in regions where we wouldn't have expected like three years back that solar could be really competitive. And I mean, I'm very much believing in uh, Tom's numbers and we are doing the same numbers that this combination, of course, uh, is opening markets and it's uh, ever faster speed. Actually, we are discussing internally, sometimes with consultants, how quick the market is growing or not. And uh, I mean, a colleague of mine is always saying, if you're looking at the past and uh, compare the growth rates which were actually happening and uh, you compare it with what has been forecasted, it was always out of Excel. And this will happen in future supposedly much faster. So what does it mean for us? I mean, it means for us as a technology uh, provider and you know, uh, Kerber Group is a big group and we are providing yeah, high tech and uh, really technology and the engineering. And I think this is what we are bringing in from Europe uh, to not talking about individual components, but solutions. So and this is, I think, what the industry is uh, picking up for us as a technology provider, it's the technology bit, but it's also the financial engineering, basically. It's uh, getting, of course, funds into the play, but also, and this is something what we are observing last 24 months, that also, let's say, experienced players yeah, from the insurance sector are picking up uh, this idea and making this product really bankable that you can uh, get from scratch to new markets and offering their energy products, which you haven't been thinking out uh, perhaps uh, two years back. So what we are seeing for my company definitely is uh, that we are right with our engineering model. That's for sure. It's not just having an inverter and we are an inverter producer, as most of you should know, but uh, how to integrate this inverter in the solution, AC, DC, DC, AC, DC, DC, AC, AC, whatever you want. Yeah? So it's always uh, where you're needing uh, our technology for sure, but to make it part of a solution. And that's um, how I think we are recognized to work in the market as a provider of solutions, but we are not doing it on ourselves, but it's, uh, we are doing as a team and as a corporation, and at the end of the day, it's project business. So you have to rely on partners, and this, I think, where is this event about and what we very much like. On the one hand side, you have 100,000 visitors uh, there in InterSolar. On the other hand, you have 200 people here who are very much shaping what we are doing in the industry. So we are ready for this huge gr growth. It's uh, disruptive in a way by every step you're taking. It's getting faster. That's a fantastic thing. And that's also why in future you will see the growth rates if you look at the back and what you have forecasted, it will be outnumbered minimum by 100% each year. So okay, thank you. thank you so much, Michael. So I would like to ask maybe now someone who actually is insuring the industry. So Michael, this is your first time when you are joining our family, let's say, for the discussion, but of course, Munich Ari is a very important player when making this transition, you know, to the mainstream, yes, because you are ensuring, you know, that these guys who are putting money, they are sure about their investments. So how do you see the future? And I imagine you are in charge of all the clean tech technologies. So I think that your colleagues in the Munich Ari must be a bit jealous, yeah? Because maybe you will be one of the most important guys in the group. 
Well, they, they certainly are, and uh, I think we have the biggest growing business in within the insurance industry, and that's one of the reasons why we do it, but we also believe in the cause. Um, I mean, quite frankly, my vision in five or ten years, if I continue my job as I do it today, it will be boring, because at that point, the renewable energy as an industry will be accepted. There is not the margin we can support to have today because of taking away the risk. It will be more of a commodity. That's a long way to go still, um, but, but it will come. And uh, I mean, what we do today right now is um, ensuring large projects, helping them to get even to investment rate and basically sharing the revenue because the financial in institutions are still hesitant to invest into these projects. That was, that's what we can do, what we help to do with, or what we do with our manufacturers in fuel cells, in LED, in energy storage, in wind, in bioenergy, waste to energy, and of course in photovoltaic. We've been doing that since, since 2009. Um, but, but certainly we don't stop here. We improve constantly. We have new solutions protecting the output, protecting uh, even the energy yield, including all, all additional risks you see. But again, ultimately, renewable energy will never go away. It will be the number one. So um, which, which is the solve. picture? The Sorry? picture, what is the picture? How do you picturize? Well, what, how, how to picturize it? Um, I mean, we discussed today about uh, a, a matrix approach that we all need to, to work together. We need to have more transparent, transparency, a clearer regulation, and uh, a support, not in the sense that we need money support, we need removing hurdles support. Um, and, and once we achieve that jointly in a global market, th that's what I, what I see in the next coming years to come. I liked very much this ma matrix approach, and welcome to the matrix. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michael. And now maybe I would like to ask uh, Paddy. Yes, Paddy, come on. Thank you. So we met uh, with Paddy in Rome a few days ago, and we exchanged a bit our visions. So I know Paddy's vision, but I think it's uh, very interesting to share this vision because Paddy is also one of the guys who think that working together can be only the way to move the world to the 4.0 uh, vision, yes? Paddy. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm delighted to be here to share my thoughts. Um, given where the, te the way the technology is taking us, given also how the use of behavior is changing, it doesn't require rocket science, and I'm not some huge visionary to imagine that the world is becoming electric. Uh, the world is going to use more and more and more renewable energy. Absolutely no doubt about it. Mr. Trump doesn't really make any difference. He's just a pinprick in the ocean. We will just move forward. What's exciting is, I think, that given how important electricity is to everything that we do, everything that we produce and everything we consume, to life itself, it has a huge, huge impact on will have, it has, and it will have as we go forward. So I think the quest is to see how we can bring it, make it more efficient, and make it available universally more cheaper. And the technology and the path that we are already on will get us there. If you look at, if you want to put a number to electricity today, Absolutely right, it's depending on the time of use and all sorts of things, different countries, different credit ratings, da di da di da But at the end of the day, if you want a kind of universal number, we've spent some time trying to figure out a number. It's anything from eight to nine to 10 cents per kilowatt hour today as a number. I see a world, I personally think it will be within my lifetime where that number will be something like two cents per kilowatt hour. A dramatic, uh, it'll have an unimaginable impact on the way we live and what we can do and how we live. That's the vision I see. The real challenge for us is to make sure that we get there in an inclusive way, not having winners and losers, as inevitably these things end up happening, but by trying to make sure 
that, the lo that we carry the losers along because otherwise we will end up spending that 10 years or 20 years or whatever it is it takes us will become longer as we continue to squabble internally and we end up delivering the likes of Trump as a leader who then continues to pull us back. Not that he's going to make a difference of any significance uh, on what the path that we are already on. Delighted to be here. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Paddy. <laughs> and now I would like to give a floor to Davide. Davide. Thank you. So, this inspiration about sharing energy, about giving to the others and also taking in some time and optimizing everything. How did you come up with this idea and how do you see that uh, Regal Grid and this sharing solution can help to reach this world 4.0? So, uh, good evening everybody. I hope you are enjoying. I'm enjoying a lot because I'm I'm realizing we have almost uh, the same uh, vision for the same scenario. PV plus storage is uh, decreasing the cost, increasing the convenience more and more and more and more. So why still burning so a lot of fossils, transforming, transporting, transforming and distributing? This will finally slow down and slow down and slow down. So the final scenario will be a lot of PV with the storage. I agree with all of you. And all the matter will be how to orchestrate it and how to distribute conveniently. We spoke about the smart grid uh, before. So Regal Grid is doing exactly this, putting a lot of efforts and investments in a software platform able to orchestrate uh, the sharing of generation and sharing of storage, exactly to drive convenience behind the meter and in front of the meter, because you can forecast a lot of advantages in doing that. Easy to say, not so easy to do, because uh, you need a lot of algorithms, a lot of uh, attention, because uh, you need uh, to have uh, security, you need uh, to have uh, privacy, you need uh, to have a lot of things. Uh, in doing that, but in the, in the end, it is very possible and convenient. Regal Grid developed uh, a very simple hardware to harvest and to collect information and data and to send in real time in a cloud application that elaborates and send back through the same device to give instruction to each inverter if it is more worth it to store energy in my battery or in your battery or in his battery according to the situation that very dynamically change according many, many parameters. This is what Regalerid is doing. We just installed a very nice installation in Italy. We, we, we just have seen the movie. And I'm Italian, so by definition, I'm very flexible. And rules are there, rules are changing, regulation is changing, sometimes fast, sometimes slow. But we are ready, and we are adapting to all, all these kind of scenarios. OK, thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> thank you so much. Thank you so much, David, and also thank you for inspiring me with this sharing, uh, sharing uh, idea. And now I would like to ask uh, the guy actually who cares about the quality and reliability, Matthias. Because I think that we cannot move to the new world yeah. with the bad quality and yes. without. So you want me to share our vision of the world? Yes. Exactly. So you know, I will start like this. Uh, Tony, we share your vision. We believe that uh, energy is pervasive. We believe that with storage and uh, energy becoming dispatchable, that is the big difference that storage brings to the equation. We will have an arbitrage market of energy uh, that will allow us to bring renewables at the low cost that they truly provide. And that's a fact. And we know these 2.4 cent uh, PPA agreements. By the way, 2.4% PPA agreements may mean much more in a merchant market. And that's what you're saying, essentially. You're saying arbitrage will make renewable energies, particular PV in this case, competitive with conventional power sources. Um, 
I was inspired to be in the PV market many years ago. I read an article in a magazine called IEEE Engineering. For, for those of you who are electrical engineers, you will know this magazine. And the article's headline was Gaza Power Strip. And it was about a power plant in Gaza, and I lived, that, I lived in that part of the world, that was providing electricity to the to Palestinians in that area using a oil-fired gas turbine power plant. And it struck me how, how crazy that is in a sense, because obviously they have a lot of the solar resource in that area of the world is very big. But there's a bigger story behind this, and that is that we need to bring that across the world. So TOV's vision is, uh, TOV Rhineland has accompanied this success of solar with our services and with, with the assurance we provide, but there's more to it. Uh, today, when you, have a, when you have this thing here, and I think everybody carries one of those, there's TOV in here. We are the people who make sure the Wi-Fi laboratories, they are run by TOV Rheinland. So the interoperability and the independent data that is provided to the Wi-Fi Alliance comes from the TOV laboratories. What does it have to do with the energy market? Because if you want the arbitrage data, you need agencies like Moody's, Standards & Poor's, maybe a couple of other ones, but you also need to have the security of the underlying technical asset. The asset could be a piece of energy, the asset could be a power plant value, it could be the megawatt hours of a battery system, and it could be the safety of a system because you want to ensure it. All of which is the vision of TV Rheinland. We want to be impartial, independent providers of precision data to the benefit of the industry. We want to help arbitrage. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Matthias. And now, now I would like to give a floor to Paul. So Paul, before you had a vision to be the, build the pipe between Africa basically to Europe, yes? And how this vision changed? The, what is now the vision of DII? Yeah, we started, as you know, uh, in 2009, which is already eight years ago, in uh, North Africa, Middle East, and tried to connect this region to Europe. And the idea in those days was to produce energy in North Africa, Middle East, and to bring the energy to Europe. It was a very primitive, maybe a little bit a crazy idea, and uh, we are standing here now eight years uh, later, and we are here a family, uh, the family of PV, the family of renewables, and we are seeing that this family that we are here together is expanding rapidly over the globe. And why is this? Not because we started eight years ago in Africa or whatever. It is because renewable energy, PV, became very, very cheap. We, we reached and we heard it of Tom and others reached cost levels of 2.4 cents, that kind of thing. So what we are now doing in DRI is not like uh, promoting a lot of uh, big power plants and, and electrical grids and all that, but it's trying to leverage on the new realities of very, very cheap renewable energy. This will become a winner. And in no time, much faster than we can think, like we always were too pessimistic maybe in, in the past about the future, in maybe 10, 20, 30 years, PV, wind, hydro, biomass, all these cheap sources will take over. So what we are doing in DII is to, to collect, to, 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 to connect companies that want to accelerate this process together with us. So it's about practical issues, like many uh, issues of how to connect these renewables to the grid, how to connect one grid to the other grid, how to connect one country to the other country, one uh, countries, one, uh, one continent to the other continent. So DII is today a group of people, and, and Paddy is one of the big promoters, and there are many others, to accelerate this process of renewables. Uh, what is the final picture and final goal? And the, the, final the, final picture, the final picture is 100% uh, renewables in all desert areas, in North Africa, Middle East, 
and uh, that will come in, in 20, 30 years uh, at latest. Mr. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. So 100% on deserts. So Jan, I mean, uh, how come we become successful if not being double green, yes? And how do you imagine this double green future? And what will be the role of PV cycle? Thank you, Thomas. Um, well, I, was, I, would, I would put it to the audience, like we heard a lot about decreasing costs. I like it. I heard a lot about things, about optimizing things. I like it. And what about if at the end of life of those PV panels, of those batteries, of those inverters, I can tell you how to win money again? Is somebody interested? Seems not. Uh, now about money, about money. Somebody interested. Well, that's, that's PV cycle. So we recycle and into our vision also 4.0, uh, the objective would be that at one point in time, those products, is it now a panel, is it an inverter, is it now a battery, it becomes at one point in time, end of life. So let's face it, we have to find a solution. Two solutions are possible. You can repower them, you can reuse them, and we have this solution in place. And we can make money out of it, and you all can benefit of it as well. And the second option is, of course, you recycle it. And when we have enough volume, we can also make money out of it. That's the vision 4.0, because today we barely took back, we took back 15,000 tons in Europe, for example. Uh, if you realize that 9 million tons of PV panels are installed in Europe, we barely recovered 0.201% of the total. So there is still a huge amount to come back there is still a huge amount of glass, aluminium, silver based, which we can recover. We can make money out of it. And that's what PV Cycle is willing to, to offer. And that's also what we now, not only are to now offering in Europe on a, on a mandatory basis. There is some legislation in place in Europe. There is a producer responsibility, but we are now open to expand it to the whole planet. So that's also why we're launching this global solution of PV panels that at least we can reuse some power, we can repower PV panels, and if at the end we cannot repower them, well, we recycle them and make money again. That's the vision we have on 4.0. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> so I have something here in my, my hands. So this is a uh, train. This is the monorail, sky rail. And actually, it's uh, working already in Shenzhen. So uh, the last uh, speaker, Tom, how do you imagine the whole future of the world following the vision of Wang Chuanfu, the founder of the company? The future, we, in our dream, we are living on the earth, right? There's no air pollution, very clean. All the uh, energy should be coming from uh, renewable energy. And uh, all the uh, renewable energy should be attached with the uh, stabilized technology like storage so that people can enjoy 24 hours renewable energy power. And uh, all the vehicle need to be electric power so that it can be uh, making the emission from the car to be zero. Whatever car can be electrified. And the last one, is the new technology we are developing is the sky rail. Why we develop that? It's because looking at the city, Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, or some other city in India, right, in other country, too many people, too crowded, traffic jam every hour, right? So it's not good. Why people buying the car, that many car? and making the overall trans transportation efficiency so low is because they don't have uh, very effective transportation tools to carry them from home to office or anywhere they want, they want to go. If we develop a very fast build and uh, economic solution for the railway for the main cities, then a lot of city is able to build it and then the people might not be really want to buy the car, 
and the number of cars being healed for the city may not be that, that many. And this will eventually result in, okay, that not so many crowded, okay, city in the future. And it will help to significantly reduce the emission, okay, from the, the whole city as well. So this is a, it's coming from a very great vision that we want to provide a total solution to the local uh, people's society, uh, human society, that it is, will be the way that we should be living in the future. Yes. Okay, so thank you so much. And I think that uh, we have an overview of the world 4.0, but I think that we have to work it, you know, together in our matrix. And I would like to now invite Hans Josef, well. please, Hans Josef. So this is the guy who had a gym in the past, yes? And I propose that one of the symbols of the world for, for zero, yeah. Tom, that you offer to Hans Josef, well. And I would like to ask also other speakers, come on. We'll build this future together. Everybody here should say thank you for Hans, for his contribution for the solar industry development today, because he initiated the feeding tariff policy and making the solar policy, uh, solar energy popularized in the world, everywhere in the world. Okay, thank you, Hans, thank you. Thank you, Tom, for saying this. Yes, feed-in tariff law was a basic, but when we have a law, what makes it sense when nobody will invest? We need all the people, the companies, all the guys, women and men who will make it alive. And that's the thank you for you and for you all that you adopted the feed-in tariff law and created a big business with it. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. And I would like to thank you also, all the guys here, because it will be you who will be driving this transition of the world, together with the guests in the room. So thumbs up for solar, yes? Together? <laughs>